Welcome, welcome everyone. My name is Sean, and today we got to talk about what is going on with the corrupt super mayor, Tiffany A. Henyard, somebody that we have an entire dedicated playlist to all her different controversies because she's a clown like figure that is managing to rule over the village of Dalton with an iron fist. And now it has come out that potentially Tiffany A. Henyard participated in a cover up of a potentially heinous crime, and that's what today's video is all about. But before we get into that, I want to thank everybody who signed up over on actualjusticewarrior.com slash join. Oh, give me the money. Give you give me the money. Okay. And to tell you that I will be speaking on April 27th at the Mines Fest, which is in Austin, Texas, at the Vulcan Gas Company. Link to tickets in the description. It's disturbing allegations against the mayor of Dalton and an unnamed village trustee. We've learned the Illinois Department of Human Rights is investigating complaints of sexual harassment and retaliation. So right off the bat, I just want to say to everyone out there in the audience that what we're going to talk about today, while disturbing, is in fact alleged, and by alleged, I mean alleged in a civil case as the criminal criminal complaint as of the time of me recording this video has not yet been filed. Now, the reason I want that out there is because everybody involved in this situation is either a super mayor loyalist or an employee at the time, even though this woman is alleging that she was fired for reporting this instance. So you have to factor in that Tiffany A. Henyard surrounds herself with opportunistic people, and this could be an instance like that. A few days ago, NBC5 obtained complaints filed with the Department of Human Rights through a free Freedom of information request. Now they're filed against Mayor Tiffany Henyard and the village of Dalton and Thornton Township. A former female employee who was Henyard's assistant alleges retaliation, sexual harassment, and discrimination after she raised concerns about an apparent non consensual sexual encounter between her and an unnamed village trustee. Now with the caveat given that this is all alleged and again not alleged at this point in time in terms of criminal court, but in this Human Rights Council complaint. Obviously, the allegations are incredibly disturbing. Now, I also want to bring up the fact that there was only one male village trustee, according to my sourcing on this particular trip. It was a guy called Andrew Holmes. So even though he is not named so far by the local media, I just want to point out that the person that we're likely talking about is Andrew Holmes. It's definitely not Jason House, who recently did an interview with Nate the Lawyer, because we actually did a video on this particular Vegas trip, and he was not on said Vegas trip. So we have a Henyard loyalist accused of a non-consensual encounter. Sounds like something completely different, like maybe we have a word for that kind of thing with an assistant of Tiffany Henyard, but more importantly is the allegations that Henyard covered it up and specifically for her reputation. And by the way, I actually took note of the fact in my previous video that Henyard played the woman card at the Village of Dalton meeting in order to obfuscate criticism that she was receiving. Let me play that clip right here. Um, I want to speak to Women's History Month. This month is Women's History Month, and I want to uplift women uh, throughout the state of Illinois uh, to keep pushing because I know I'm going through what I'm going through, but it's a lot of women that's like me that's going through mess where people think they could come in and strong arm them and tell them what to do and don't think that they're not going to fight back. So I want them to know to keep going. Don't give up. Never, never, never give up and keep pushing no matter what you do. And this is to my women because I know how hard it is. It is a boys club. And unfortunately, they don't want us leading like we're doing now. I have two big, powerful seats and everybody thought they was going to be able to come and tell me what to do. They thought they was going to start this little smear campaign and I want to fight back. I'm going to always fight for what's right. And I'm always stay the course and I will be victorious when all the dust clear. You see, mark my word. So if these allegations aren't in fact true and she participated in this cover-up it is just one more notch against this woman and her absolute insane regime the dalton police officer says in a separate complaint filed with the department of human rights that he also faced retaliatory actions for coming forward with what he witnessed so yeah, like they said, they also have a cop that was on Tiffany Henyard's security detail that is backing up the story and saying that he was also retaliated against by Mayor Henyard, the super mayor, and this is all coming together to paint a very nasty picture of the super mayor, but I do want to point out that these are the same officers that were billing hundreds of hours of overtime over the course of two-week periods. The officers are paid every two weeks, which without overtime is 80 hours. 
But when they're put on Henyard's detail, that 80 hours balloons to well over 100 hours, sometimes 200 hours. And in the case of Officer Terry Young last May, 303 hours worked over a two-week period. That resulted in a single paycheck of more than $13,000. How? How does a person put in a two-week pay period, 303 hours? That's impossible. That's there's, impossible. There's 336 Does he hours never go to sleep? In, in fact, there are 336 hours total in two weeks. And again, we have an assistant of Henyard. So these could be opportunistic people looking for revenge on the super mayor for being removed from the security detail and for being fired as the assistant. So I just want to make that clear. I want people out there in the audience to understand that there are not a lot of good people around Mayor Tiffany Henyard. I will point out that Henyard has a sketchy past when it comes to this. In fact, one of her original scandals was the fact that she hired a gang rapist to work as a village inspector. Frustration growing in South Suburban Dalton after a Fox 32 investigation uncovers a registered child sex offender was recently put on the payroll. But it is important for you to understand that these are all people who at one point in time were in Henyard's inner circle, so they're all sketchy people involved in the filing and on the receiving end of these complaints. The incident allegedly occurred during an economic development trip to Las Vegas last May. So I just want to point out that the local news dead wrong here in their reporting of this as an economic development trip. We've covered this Vegas trip specifically. This was something that Henyard did as a vacation. She did it for fun. She built high-end restaurants, high-end hotels, and even flew first class to the tune of $3,700. They show township taxpayers also spent money on the Vegas trip on everything from steak dinners to hotels and $3,741 just on Henyard's round trip. Trip flight for one her own first class ticket so no absolutely not was this a developmental trip this was a trip where henyard was incinerating the taxpayer dollars i do not handle anything as it relates to it with credit cards as you heard me speak today in my board meeting about i do not handle that some of those charges are for you though no sir you didn't go to las vegas mm. what, what is that no comment you don't know if you were in las vegas of course i do were you? It's not paid by them. Did you fly first class to Las Vegas? Any other questions? And the reason why that's absolutely crucial is because one of the defenses is absolutely comical. According to her complaint, the woman says she went to dinner with an unnamed Dalton trustee. The complaint then recounts the following events. After dinner, she says she started to feel disoriented, extremely lightheaded, as if the ground was moving. She says she blacked out. According to the complaint, the next morning, she woke up in the trustee's hotel room with no memory of how she got there, experiencing physical discomfort. Now, look, if true, this is a really bad situation, obviously. And it seems like the local media is kind of downplaying it by calling it a non-consensual encounter. Because according to what I'm reading in this complaint, what they just highlighted, it would appear that she is alleging that she was drugged Bill Cosby style. She ended up blacking out and she had no memory of this encounter that supposedly took place. Again, allegations, if true, we all understand that. So I don't quite understand when she's clearly and obviously accusing this trustee of rape, why they're downplaying it in the media, but at the same time, they're saying that they're trying to be extra sensitive. Perhaps it's because something technical related to this complaint, but to me, when you drug a woman and you sleep with her and she's unconscious, that that's that's obviously that's obviously rape, right? 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 Are, are we are we not like noticing that? She says after returning to Dalton, Officer Byron Miles, who was part of Henyard's security detail and went on the trip to Vegas, told her a trustee on the trip told him that the trustee had unprotected sex with her. Officer Miles has also filed the complaint with the Human Rights Department. The woman states in her complaint that after she was told this, she went immediately to seek medical care. Now, this is where we would be looking for corroboration of this particular allegation because she said that after she heard this from this particular officer who was on Henyard's security detail, she ended up going to the hospital immediately for medical care. There should be some record of that actually occurring. However, I do want to point out that if this was a consensual encounter and they happened to be unprotected and she happened to be concerned about it, it could also lead to her seeking medical attention when she returned home on her trip. So yeah, while it is important to verify whether or not she sought this medical attention, whether or not there are records of it, it's not necessarily proving the truth of the whole of her allegations, but it would at least prove that in this particular moment, there was actually some verifiable information, at least to see whether or not her allegations track. Both complaints then provide details of a meeting which took place the following day with the former assistant, Officer Miles and Mayor Henry. 
Henyard. At this meeting, the woman informed Henyard that she would never willingly have sex with the trustee. Officer Miles informed Henyard and the woman that the trustee called him that night in Vegas. The trustee, he says, then bragged about the sexual activities he engaged in with the woman, Miles' complaint says, suggesting that she may have not had the ability to consent or did not provide consent. According to the complaint, Officer Miles recorded some of this conversation on his iPhone. So the devil's always in the details right here. So apparently this trustee, again, we talked about who it is likely to be, even though, again, allegedly, 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 called this particular officer or got into a conversation with this particular officer. And during the course of the conversation, the trustee said that this person might not have had the ability to consent to this particular encounter. And then this officer ended up recording portions of the conversation. Now, portions of the conversation is doing a lot of heavy lifting in this particular sentence because for all we know, he heard the crazy part, then tried to record, and he's saying that he did record portions of the conversation, but all of the crazy stuff, all of the incriminating stuff came prior to that recording being initiated. And the reason I'm just saying that this is absolutely crucial is because you would think in a complaint like this, where you tend to lead with your strongest information, they would have quotes of this this trustee saying the things that are the most damning, but it doesn't appear that they have that. It just says that he has this recording. And again, it's admittedly a partial recording of a conversation. So it may or may not be out of context. Now, of course, Henyard's reaction to this, Miss Strong Woman, Miss Defend the Woman from the Boys Club and all that is absolutely crucial. According to the complaints, the mayor said that if this information became public, she would be ruined, that all the work she'd done would be lost. The ex-employee says the mayor told her she would take care of it and to trust her. Days later, according to her complaint, the woman was put on unpaid medical leave, though she says she did not request to be put on leave. She was later terminated. In his complaint, Officer Miles alleges that he was demoted to patrol duty, among other retaliation, for coming forward as a witness. So to be clear, I 100% believe that if Tiffany Henyard was confronted with the situation where there was a scandal related to her administration, then she would, in fact, think that she was done politically, think only about her, because that is in line with her pattern of behavior. On top of that, the Dalton Board of Trustees only has six people on it, so losing a member of the board is a a crucial vote that she can't afford to lose because as of right now we're seeing what's happening now that the board is four to two against her on a bunch of different issues and we've seen her frustration with that so i do believe that if she was actually legitimately in this situation that henyard would act in this way again she's originally got into a scandal because she hired a predator and had him as an inspector because that person was her friend and then she got mad at people for trying to explain expose it, not to mention all the other crazy, selfish things that she did, and not to mention the way that she will cold-bloodedly lie to people's faces like she did in the Roland Martin interview. So I wouldn't be surprised if she told this woman, don't worry about it, you're my assistant, I got you, and then immediately made moves to fire the assistant and to demote the officer from her security detail who was a part of the complaint. In a statement to NBC5, the village says it conducted a thorough investigation into these allegations led by an independent third-party company. The statement goes on to say former police officer Miles was interviewed and denied knowing anything about these allegations and the alleged victim refused to cooperate. Now we have Keith Freeman, who is Tiffany Henyard's right hand man, and he says, look, we conducted a very thorough investigation into these allegations. We actually had a third party company. I would love to see the evidence of that. I would love to see the proof of that. And they acted accordingly. However, Keith Freeman ended up punctuating this statement with the following. And to me. This is so absurd. The statement continues, this is nothing more than two disgruntled village employees trying to make off with taxpayers hard on dollars. The village looks forward to defending these allegations and pursuing all other available remedies to the village. Yeah, he actually punctuated this statement with these are just two disgruntled Dalton employees trying to make off with hard earned taxpayer dollars. Could you imagine somebody trying to steal money from the Dalton taxpayers? Could you imagine them trying to do it from the Thornton Township taxpayers? I mean, it's absolutely absolutely ridiculous and absurd that anyone would try to frivolously make off with taxpayer dollars. Pay no attention to the fact that this all allegedly occurred in Las Vegas 
on a taxpayer funded trip that was a vacation where they spent tens of thousands of dollars on high end hotels, high end meals, and of course, nearly four grand on Tiffany A. Henyard's own personal first class round trip ticket. But Keith Freeman will be damned if anybody but the super mayor makes off with taxpayer dollars. He will be damned if anyone is going to frivolously profit off the village of Dalton except for the super mayor. I mean, they're having their cars repossessed, they're having their street streetlights repossessed we've covered this on previous videos they're not paying for the repairs of their police cars it's absolutely insane the basic things that they're not covering in the budget but over and over again we see tiffany henyard take lavish luxury vacations and they have the audacity to accuse somebody else of trying to make off with the tax dollars crazy in every possible way. Now, I'm going to leave the floor open to all of you guys out there in the audience. I want to know what you think about these allegations. Did you think that I am right to be a little bit more skeptical of this as compared to the other Tiffany A. Henyard claims? Or do you think this definitely fits in with her character and 100% this guy's guilty and Henyard covered it up? All your thoughts, let me know down in the comments below. Now, if you liked this video, then show them by leaving a like, subscribe for more content, follow me on my social medias, support me via the support links in the description of this video this has been me talking about tiffany henyard potentially covering up a serious felony till next time